across heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah. Hey everyone, and a few hours ago I just finished playing Fallout 76's first beta session, I guess, as they're doing them in kind of chunks, like four to eight hour chunks every single day. I played for the full four hours and recorded for all of those four hours. So if you want to see unedited gameplay of Fallout 76, I have uploaded that as an unlisted video. It's the top link in the description below if you just want to watch me play the game. But this little video is all about my initial impressions and thoughts while playing the game. Because when this was first announced at E3, I'm pretty sure my first initial reaction to it then was, huh, I'm gonna have to see how I feel about this. And it, that's one of the things I had going into this, is I didn't really have much of a positive opinion. I was fairly negative, purely because of the way things they were changing. But I can say after four hours, I'm coming out of this fairly positive. There's not that many negatives to talk about. I mean, I got to explore this amazing world. I got to see so many cool things and that things that hint at later things in the game as well. I saw this high level monster fly past. I also saw a dude run past in power armor, but he was still like my level. So not sure if maybe he found that luckily somewhere, but all that sort of stuff is really cool. And seeing other people do these other things is also really, really special. But let's dive in to kind of a little bit more focused discussion about some of my impressions. And I'm gonna start off with the negatives because I have a quite a long list of positives. So I think I should start with the negatives. So the first thing I wanna point out is the performance. So if you see it when you're watching these clips in this video or if you see it if you go watch the full four hours, the frame rate takes some pretty big hits at different points. So if you go into a town, for example, where there's lots of other people around, the frame rate drops. There's an, a place I went to, it's like an airport, frame rate tanked. Like, I was doing an event in one of these areas and the frame, frame rate was just so low. Like, it, you can see it's chugging along, it's not great. Um, and the other thing is, sometimes, for some reason, the game just freezes for long periods of time. For example, when you open the map, it takes like... I know, it looks like I've paused the, the video for a while and then the map loads up, it just takes a really long time. But then even just running around, sometimes there'd be like hitches and it would just stop and then come back. I'm hoping these are very much beta issues and they will be ironed out and the game might be a little bit more optimized by launch or maybe post launch they'll keep optimizing and, and keep figuring this stuff out because it is only these densely populated areas. When I was running around the forests or quieter settlements or exploring uh, little areas, it seemed way, way smoother. It seemed locked at 30 in those places. I didn't really see that many dips. It was only when I got, you know, into those more populated areas, not only with other players, but in terms of the density of enemies or the detail and how many buildings there are, things like that, that seemed to make the performance really drop. Now, this is a Bethesda game, so it wouldn't be a Bethesda impressions video without a couple of glitches. Now, I first noticed a really weird thing in the first town I got to where there's these cargo drops that get dropped down at different times and you can go collect cool stuff from them. And I saw the smoke from the beacon coming out of this building. I was like, okay, I'll go you know, behind this building and get it. Went behind the building, not there. The, the, it's just not there. So then I realized it somehow glitched into the building and I had to kind of angle myself in a way to pick it up, which was weird. Later uh, in the previously mentioned airport, I was doing an event and at the end of the event, this copter comes down, this kind of like quadcopter looking thing, looks a bit like a big drone uh, and comes down to put the um, the, the cargo drop down so we can collect some cool loot for doing this event and it just glitches into a wall I have no idea what it's doing like what is this and then I uh, again right at the end of my play session in the last kind of 10 minutes or so um, I'm fighting off you know some super mutants I see 
this quad cup to come down again and it just glitches out it just it just dances all over the place i don't know what is going on but there is clearly a recurring bug with this specific thing in the game i mean it you, you can literally just replicate what you're seeing on screen by going and playing and looking for one of these cargo drops it's ridiculous uh, luckily i still managed to get this one and get some loot from it uh, the other weird thing I've noticed, because they've made some changes to the um, the engine, so it isn't the same engine as... Uh, well, it is the same engine as previous Fallouts and, and Skyrim and all this, and they all kind of share the same backend, but it's uh, they've improved it a lot. Um, so view distance is up, and uh, you know you can do multiplayer stuff. All, the, all this stuff, they've, they've improved and changed in it. But the lighting is really strange at times. Like, I can see it flickering at other times. Other times it just looks really flat and boring. I'm not quite sure why, because sometimes it looks spectacular and it's this breathtaking scenery, and then other times it just looks not great and it completely takes your immersion out. I suppose that also, I should mention with this, is that popping is quite bad. If you're just like walking across an area, you'll see trees and buildings kind of popping in the distance. And there was one point when I was using a crafting bench and I was going into the animation and the entire background of the little settlement I was in disappears and you just see mountains and then it comes back again. It was really weird and yeah, very, very glitchy. But other than that, I can now positively say they're my only real negatives. There's a couple of negative aspects of some of the things I like that I'll talk about uh, soon, but they're the only real things in my you know four hours that i saw that were immersion breaking or game breaking in some ways um and i thought i'd just mention those first because i think i think it's time we dive into the positive impressions which i have a long list so i'll try to get through these somewhat quickly but i have a lot of things to say about some of them so the first thing i want to talk about is the world this, this lush world of west virginia where they put you it's absolutely incredible it doesn't feel like a fallout game sometimes because you're walking through like these really densely populated forests the leaves kind of glow orange in the sunlight there's beautiful rivers and all these things and the buildings even though they're run down all of them look really pretty and there's all this just beautiful level design well design all of that all just rolled into one even some of the interiors really impressed me they, they just look really different from how Fallout interiors have in the past, in my opinion. Uh, some of them are super boring, unpopulated interiors. I walked into a... If I can find the footage for this. I walked into a Red Rocket uh, gas station and there was just, like, nothing inside. It was just pitch black with a load of empty shelves. So some things aren't that interesting. But other areas, like inside the vault Tech University, I think that was really cool because there was little dioramas statues and i even met a guy in here and we you know he he seemed a little bit startled by my presence but then uh, you know we we called off and that's something i think i'm going to jump down my list a little bit here and just talk about the fact that there are other players in this world which seems really like well yeah it's fallout 76 but i was super worried about this i just thought people would be running up to you killing you all the time you wouldn't be able to do anything but the actual system they've put in place for players is incredible like i can't believe how tailored towards people who like single player games it is it's very surprising to me so pvp let's talk about pvp first so if you run up to someone and you shoot them they take reduced damage until they shoot you back then that initiates it as like a duel and then you can both start fighting each other some people will hate that i think that's great because it let me run away from people who wanted to kill me it let me just get out of the way and they kind of lost interest because I wasn't, I didn't want to fight. You know, I, I don't like PvP. Um, I like PvE. That's my sort of thing. But what I do love is the emote system where you can wave to each other and do different cool little emotes when you see another player. This started as early for me as in the vault. I saw another player and it continued all the way outside. I kept waving at people. I kept meeting people in different buildings and it just felt really cool to just meet up with people randomly sometimes there were a lot of people in one area sometimes it was just me and then i randomly found someone it's still really really cool to do 
and even after four hours, it's kind of a rush to find someone else um, surviving in the world. It's amazing, because once people start spreading out from the vault, they kind of go in any direction they want, but obviously a lot of people funneled down the linear story path. Um, but it was still really, really cool um, to randomly bump into people after four hours. It was nice. Okay, so let's jump back up on my impressions list and talk about gameplay kind of mechanics. So gunplay and melee, definitely. So I personally think, I don't know what other people will think, I think the gunplay just feels much tighter than it did in Fallout 4. It feels like more of a viable thing. I felt in Fallout 4 I had to use VATS a lot. Um, and that was kind of the only way to get the advantage. But in this game, it feels like you're more accurate. There's it, Also, the guns feel more weighty and more powerful. I don't know. Maybe I, I just haven't played Fallout 4 in too long. Um, but it felt really great. I really enjoyed it, actually. Both gunplay and melee. Like, they felt really great. One of the first items I crafted was a hatchet to replace my machete because I just like the look of the, the axe and I was swinging that around killing different enemies lots of times and it, it was great I, I liked having that as a backup when my ammo for my guns ran out but I did mention Vats there now Vats has gone through probably the biggest change from previous games to this one out of probably most of the mechanics because no longer does it freeze time and let you target different limbs although you can get a perk uh, in one of the trees well, well you can get a card that you can apply to one of the specials that will let you target limbs I think and yeah that is a thing um, but just default vets by standard you hold down the left bumper on Xbox which is where I was playing and um, it just puts you into this targeting mode I guess where if you're even not looking at them say if they're off on the left of the screen or right of the screen you can just pull right trigger and your shots will have that percentage value that you can see on screen to then hit the target it's actually a little bit like classic aimbots and things like that but built into the game so it's not a cheat or something and I don't know something about it just felt really fun I, I was surprised I was like well that's is gonna be the worst thing but if you've got a melee weapon out and you are pretty close, but you can't, you're not quite close enough, you can use bats to lunge forward and do the attack, kind of like, it'll almost like snap you forward, which is pretty useful. Um, you can also just use it to hip fire really quickly if you're trying to do damage really fast. And I think that's just amazing. It reminds me a little bit of the Deadeye system from Red Dead Redemption. I know we've got Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out pretty soon but where you can just kind of target people and then keep firing and then the hits will happen. It's somewhat similar to that. Not quite because you're not targeting multiple people at once, but it had that sort of feel to me. Anyway, uh, I, I did mention there about perk cards and I think that's something we should mention, which is the level up system in general is vastly different from Fallout 3 and New Vegas. And again, still vastly different from Fallout 4. Um, when you level up, you can put one point into each of your special so uh, strength, for example, or perception, uh, I put some points into those. And, well, you get cards when you level up. So when you put a point into that special, you get to choose one card for that special specifically. But then you also, every now and again, you'll get like a, a card pack. And you'll open this up. One of the cards will be kind of shiny, like holographic. You'll get a little joke and a bit of gum. And this is a... An interesting mechanic because you can then start applying different cards on top of each other. So you can start having multiple perks within one tree of the special, all doing different things. And it started being really cool. By the end of my play session, I think I had a card in every single one of my special slots and some had two or three cards in them. Really fun kind of balancing that out. Uh, I was trying to go into trying to find more... Um, stim packs more regularly especially from searching medical containers and, and things like that I tried to increase that because I ran out of stim packs after a, a very very long fight with some super mutants which I guess I should also talk about which is death so I died once to some super mutants they didn't like me very much now I went through a fairly grueling fight to get back there um, they were doing a lot of damage to me I don't quite know why because I think they were only like level 5 or something but I got back to where my dead body was and there's just this nice little paper bag with all the junk in it. So all you lose from dying is your junk and that junk is used for crafting and you can also 
uh, kind of like scrap the junk to be make it into more useful um, items and things like that to for crafting. So junk is important, but if you die, you don't drop your weapons or your armor or anything like that. It's just some of your items, and it doesn't cost any caps when you die. It, caps is a weird thing as well. It seems I only ever used caps to buy from a vendor once and then also whenever you fast travel it costs like a couple of caps. It's very weird. Like they don't seem super useful right now and I seem to get a couple of hundred of them in my four hours so they're not super rare or anything. Anyway, let's talk about environment stuff for a little bit. I talked about the lush world earlier but time of day was a thing I noticed very early on because when I left the vault it was already like sunset and then it got night pretty quick and then the night felt really long like a really really long time and then daytimes felt really short I don't know if this was just me but I felt like it wasn't light enough all of the time because I really like how the game looks in the daytime there's something really cool about it and the way the world kind of comes alive with all the different colors while at night I felt like it was very difficult to see anything. It was really dark. I was using my pit boy light a lot and running into plays in the dark was pretty terrifying. Uh, that happened a couple of times. Luckily, they were friendly. We waved at each other, but still pretty, pretty terrifying at night. I don't massively like the time of day system, if I'm honest. Maybe the days could be longer than the nights or something like that, but I don't know. It just it just feels like it's dark more than it is light. And I feel like this video will reflect that. You'll see a lot more stuff in the night during than the day, but maybe I would have just chosen footage from the day. Who knows? Uh, one thing I instantly get addicted to in games is photo mode. And they introduce you to photo mode really early on by asking you to take a photo for like your ID card. And what's really cool about this is this is fully in real time. So you can change your expression, your pose, the camera angle, and you can even apply filters and stuff. But then later on, you can just keep taking photo mode. And I don't know if there's a shortcut to it, but right now you go to the map and then you can use photo mode by pressing another button on the, on the map. And that puts you into photo mode. You can do things from expressions to different poses. You can change brightness, contrast, saturation. You can do a lot of really cool things. I love photo mode in games. If anyone's ever seen my Twitter, all I do when I play a game with photo mode is post photos. So for Spider-Man, for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, all I was doing was posting photo mode images because I get so invested in that character in that world that I just keep taking more and more photos and I want to remember this time, I want to remember these sites I've seen. So I was running around at different times uh, taking photos and what's crazy to me is that they then use these photos you've taken as loading screens when you're fast traveling or going into areas. So you might just see one of your favorite photos you've taken pop up on a loading screen, which I was like, oh my God, that's me. That was a really cool moment when I saw that loading into somewhere. Uh, and then I guess before I wrap this up, I should talk about two more things, which is the camp. So the camp, uh, I didn't use massively. There was a quest where you had to go through to learn a few schematics, and then I went up on a hill, built a couple of planks of wood, put a stash down, and then um, put a little cooking station down. And that was it. I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't have a huge amount of resources to start building like a house or anything. But it's a more robust, more detailed version of the kind of the building system from Fallout 4. It seems like there's far more options and the UI seems quicker. There's Everything just seems a little bit snappier with it. It seemed really nice for the little amount of time I used it. Um, it was getting to the last half an hour of the, of the beta, so I decided to not spend a huge amount of time focusing on the camp. But I at least got to place my camp down and do a little bit of building. And then the last thing I want to talk about is probably the thing that surprised me most, which they've, Bethesda has definitely borrowed from other open world games that have online components, is events. Now, when you look at the map, you'll see these little yellow hexagons. Now, you can fast travel to these straight away and get involved in the event, or you may just randomly walk into them and the event will pop up. Now, these are events which can take like up to a certain amount of time and other players can get involved and all get the rewards from it. The first one I did was I had to escort this little robot dude to a motel. 
So I, I was the only one there. So I'm, you know, walking with him for a while. Uh, I killed a couple of things. And then a super mutant, like a, a really powerful super mutant turned up. I killed that. We kept going. And by the time we made it through town, uh, a bunch of other players who were in town joined up. And we were all going to this motel together. And then we get to the door. And the robot tells some bad news, supposedly, to whoever's inside that someone has died. And then we just get attacked by a bunch of mole rats. And that was the end of the of the little event. It was really cool, kind of escorting this robot. It sounds boring. Escort quests and fetch quests and stuff are super boring in RPGs normally. But this felt really, really fun. And if, it, if I didn't do the same one over and over again frequently, I feel like they would feel really cool. I didn't do too many others. I did do a couple of other ones, but sometimes I was going, I was kind of focusing, trying to go to another story mission or another event when another one popped up next to me. So I didn't do too many all at once, but pretty fun. One of the other ones I remember is there was a bunch of crazy robots on a farm that you had to go kill and then go reset them or something. And in there, I found uh, a tape from the overseer from the vault and uh, there was a bunch of people around me. It was really crowded, actually. I think we were all looking for the thing to end the event, and we all found this other thing. So, there we go. Anyway, those are my impressions. I've rambled for over 20 minutes. Uh, I hope you can see that I'm fairly passionate about how positive I'm being about this game, because I was super down on this. I was not even going to buy it. I still don't know when I'm going to buy it, but I'm pretty sure I am going to play this game for a good chunk of time when it's out. I'm pretty excited actually to dive into another one of the beta sessions and just play without recording. I am kind of surprised at how much I enjoyed this. Like the four hours flew by. I'm just going to keep rambling and talking about this game if I don't stop this video. So thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. And please let me know what you think of Fallout 76 if you go and check out the game yourself, either in beta or when it's finally out. See you all next time. Goodbye!